Crossing focuses on growth companies. We like growth companies because they grow their profits over time and they can become a large part of the economy as well. Uh, what we've noticed with growth companies, the best growth companies that emerge are typically fairly narrowly focused companies, but the category can be very large. Uh, examples of that would be uh, Google and paid search, Starbucks and coffee shops, etc. And our approach is to get involved with these companies as either early as possible or when there's kind of inflection points from a valuation point of view for a particular company. And so what we do is we invest in these companies at the company building stage in venture capital. Uh, we do them post uh, initial public offering and sometimes restarts and turnarounds. A company like Apple, for example, when we bought it 10 years ago, was kind of a restart when Steve Jobs came back. We do have a separate venture capital team and a public team, but maybe more importantly than that is we have three industry teams, if you will, covering three relatively broad parts of the economy. One is a consumer slash internet group. The second is we call utility computing. It's really traditional information technology. And the third is around emerging energy technologies and those business models. And what we're really trying to do in each group is the venture guys working with the public team to decide uh, what are the best business models, who are the best managers in a particular category, um, who will be the winning companies, and how do we value these securities. So we're looking at growth companies, we're trying to buy them at a reasonable price, we're trying to look at each company that we invest in for not as just what we think was going to happen, but sometimes we're looking at the risk around that. Sometimes a downside case, often an upside case as well. And then we're trying to um, see, given this array, array of outcomes, what's the best way to place our money in the, uh, for our, our investors. Uh, we don't use options, we don't use derivatives, and we don't use leverage. We're rational people and we take a long-term orientation. Okay, I'll put our successful picks into three categories. Venture capital, um, public market investments, you know, post-IPO, or restarts and turnarounds in the public market. And um, in venture capital, we've had a great year this year. Uh, most notable has been the uh, initial public offering of Pandora in June. This is a company that Crosslink invested in five, six years ago. Uh, we invested when they were pre-revenue pre, pre company. Uh, one of our partners, Jim Foy, has a board seat at the company. Um, it's been a big hit for us. They're the leader in internet radio. We're the largest investor in the company. Uh, we came about the company through our involvement uh, starting on the public market through our investment in Apple around the iPod where we came to believe that music was going to be distributed over the internet and not through traditional media. Uh, we have a nice hit this year in Blue Arc and computer storage. It was sold to Hadachi Data Systems um, and Ancestry.com. Uh, it's been a winner for us for a number of years in venture capital now and into the public market. They're the leader in um, uh, internet genealogy or uh, family history, I guess you could think call. Um, in the post-IPO realm, um, we've had a nice run in this year in a company called Fortinet. This is a computer security company. We've known the CFO there for about 20 years. Uh, really liked the business model and the deep expertise the team had in security. We knew them for, through our venture capital contacts. Um, five years ago, we made an investment in First Solar. This is the leader in thin film solar. Um, we bought the stock on the IPO. We had a virtual 10 timer for us during the year of 2007. That was a great hit for us. And that really came to us through our venture capital sources, again, of understanding that market and actually knowing the management team. Two of the five top guys came from our venture capital portfolio where they took guys out of pretty good companies to go to even a better company. And um, in restarts and turnarounds, um, I guess the most notable um, investment is Apple. We invested about 10 years ago after Jobs came back and um, they came off the iPod. 
And, um, but a, even a bigger hit for us was a company called Equinex. Equinex is um, a computer hosting company, I like to say. In cloud computing, the cloud lives in their building because that's where all the hosting is typically done. This is a company that went public in 2000. A lot of money was raised. Um, and we found them when they were trading at one-time sales, $150 million market cap in the public market. Uh, we um, uh, proposed a uh, pipe deal, which we were the only investor in. We took a board seat in the company at that time at $3 a share. Now the stock's at 90 So that's been a great uh, success uh, situation for us. So those are just some of the examples, and so it's usually the interplay between the public and private teams working together is how we find our best ideas. We are a unique firm in the investment management business in terms of how we combine the public market and venture capital together. So first and foremost, we need to um, find, hire, and integrate what I call bilingual growth company investors in both the venture capital side and the public side of what we do. And then what we need to do is form relationships um, with limited partners who have a long-term view. And I think that, that one another challenge is in a day in the world of, of highly volatile uh, capital markets is for how to think about those markets. Um, and every cycle is a little different, what we found, too. For example, after um, 1999, when the internet bubble burst, we restricted our venture capital activities dramatically. Um, in 2008, when that market broke, we did it only a little bit in that. We changed our orientation around quite a bit, industry by industry, but we kept the investment process going on. And we have continued to do that this year as well. And in the public area, it's just when um, daily volatility is often greater than the yield of a long-term bond in one year. It's just how do we keep our long-term orientation and focus on the big opportunities that each company presents as opposed to worrying what the stock market's doing day to day. Mm -hmm.